Hello? Hi, are we live? Yeah, okay. Cool, uh, so thank you for coming. Uh, next talk is gonna be uh, Kai Fata, which is a publishing house uh, run by, uh, excuse me for my pronunciation, <laughs> uh, Maha Mahum and then Ala Yunis, which are from Egypt and Kuwait. And their practice is really interesting. They, they've been publishing a lot. They have a series of books, like these little ones, uh, which are the how-to, which is actually the meaning of the name of the, of the editorial, Kai Fata, means how-to. And they started with this uh, joke of how to, mm, how to give it uh, a different way of, of telling stories. And uh, they're also curators, uh, apart from editors, and they've been doing exhibitions and research projects. It's really interesting, uh, the research they've done wi about uh, independent publishing in the Middle East. So, yeah, let's uh, welcome Ana Mayu, uh, Maya with a big applause. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So, can you hear us well? Can you hear us? Yes. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you for inviting us. It looks great uh, what you're doing. Wish we were there. And uh, thank you for the introduction uh, of Kei Fatan. That was very nice. And uh, yeah, so my name is Maha Ma'moon. And I'm Ala Yunus. And I'm from Jordan, but I was born in Kuwait, so it's a general uh, mistake that people think uh, that, uh, yeah, that they think I'm from Kuwait, but I am from Kuwait and Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> and Many yeah, countries. we would uh, like to uh, introduce uh, Kei Fata, uh, uh, to you, both as, a, as it started. It started, uh, like the idea started in 2012, but our first book came out in 2013. Like you said, uh, Kei Fata means how to, and all our books uh, begin with, uh, with the title how to. Um, we are originally um, artists uh, and uh, curators and uh, involved in, uh, in cultural institutions in both our cities, in uh, Cairo and in Amman, Jordan. Um, Kei Fata started as an idea in, in 2012. We were always interested in uh, creating or in participating in platforms that uh, share uh, more about artistic work with a broader public. So this idea of uh, uh, art being kind of enclosed in niche spaces or niche languages and all of this, we always wanted to uh, broaden the, the, the platform more. And uh, Kei Fata, uh, started uh, um, like in this in this time that was very uh, 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 there was a lot of change in the region in our different uh, countries in uh, 2012, um, 2011, 2012, 2013 onwards, and um, we felt that uh, it was a very generative time of. Uh, uh, for different uh, ideas, people were coming up with different questions of how to deal with our current situation, how do we uh, rethink our past and how do we rethink our future and uh, uh, what kind of language do we want to create and, uh, and things like this. And we were also interested, again, it was a moment of expansion, right? So again, this idea of exiting these niche uh, spaces of... Uh, art spaces or like niche languages, we wanted to exit that. So we thought that Kei as a publishing project can be uh, a project uh, that uh, bridges uh, or that fills uh, the space in the middle between uh, writers who are more, uh, or artists who write who are more uh, known in art circles. However, their, their perspective is, uh, can be very relevant and accessible to other audiences. So to, to invite these authors and writers also in a series that also has writers that are normally associated with a kind of broader public, uh, more uh, maybe accessible to a mainstream readership, but who have a very also special language. So we 
wanted to bring these different kinds of authors into one series and that the series would be uh, pocket size, uh, cheap, uh, sold in general bookstores. Um, the idea was to publish in Arabic, uh, but then we very fast uh, uh, realized that there was an interest in it uh, beyond the Arab speaking world. So we also started uh, translating and publishing in uh, every book in two editions, like in Arabic and in English. Um, you want to take can you see our screen because we have uh, prepared some visuals or some images to show you yes maybe we'll, uh, the, we talk about the uh, um, um, yes so we have a uh, thought um for a moment let me just uh full screen Um, yeah, we have designed. We have decided to work with a pocket, or to start working with a pocket size format. Um, basically, books that are very small and can be, like, um, can be as long as one an article, like what, six thousand words, or can also be um, uh, twenty thousand words. We don't limit the size of the. Uh, are you sharing the screen? Something in the screen right now, or is it all? We see a black screen. What about now? Do you see? Okay. Okay. Now you see it, right? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, we thought that uh, one way to to go about the series is basically to create, um, to put it or position it between several worlds, you know, the world, the art world and the non-art world and the specialized world, non-specialized world. Um, we thought that we can commission uh, texts that would be uh, somehow smuggled into the, the minds of the readers. So for instance, the first, very first book or the very first edition of our books did not have the title or the name of the sorry the name of the author on it, and um, <clears throat> it was about uh, it was called how to disappear and so we imagined or wanted people to pick it up just because of the title, and for that we have thought of this logo basically the Trojan horse with two people pulling it. Um, maybe this also kind of uh, self explain you know, what we're trying to do with types of content or types of uh, formats and uh, and expressions that we have. Uh, yeah, we are we are interested in bringing or uh, making more, making them available or further available within uh, to the readers. So can I can show you here uh, the covers, uh, close ups on the covers of the first books. Uh, so basically, that's the second edition of the first book, How to Disappear, and it's by Haytham and Wardani. And <clears throat> this is, uh, uh, yeah, so sometimes our writers are, are writers or authors of books, and sometimes they're artists. And uh, some of these uh, <clears throat> projects are, you know, art projects that have been, you know, that intrigue uh, the use of hands or to think about uh, bullet points as a way of, uh, of presenting. Maybe you take over and get mm -hmm. some. Yeah. yeah, so, um, yeah, what, uh, what you're seeing, yeah, is like the first, uh, on the left is the first book, How to Disappear, and the other is the, the first one is by Haysan Wardeni, an Egyptian writer. The one on the right, how to imitate the sound of the shore using two hands on a carpet by the Turkish artist Javdat Eric. So yeah, like uh, like we said, like the idea of the the Trojan horse uh, uh, kind of encapsulates uh, a little bit what we're doing in the sense that it is a form uh, through which we can pass other forms through it. So the choice of the how-to manuals was for us uh, a choice that okay it's a it's a popular format that is recognizable by uh, across the board uh, however we use it in a way that is not um, prescriptive uh, so whereas people would expect from a how-to book that it would tell you how to do this or that 
uh, these texts are more uh, reflective. Uh, they are um, uh, pose questions and reflect on them rather than giving you like the the how to uh, you know uh, way of doing things. And um, it was kind of uh, like our experience has been quite interesting in. Uh, how authors respond. So what we do is we invite uh, authors from across the board who, in whose work we are interested in or whose sensibility we feel a connection to and that it is pertinent to the time. Uh, and we ask them to uh, propose a question. So the questions always come from the, from the authors. And uh, they propose a question and then they start, we go through this process together um, of discussing and like uh, seeing like uh, the text in different uh, stages of development um, and uh, yeah like Alette was saying sometimes it's uh, it's based on an artistic practice uh, the text so with Javdat Eric he's also a musician uh, he presents uh, this project how to imitate the sound of the shore using two hands on the carpet sometimes he presents it as a performance right and uh, in uh, physical space and in this book he kind of combines both a written part but also a manual of how to produce this exercise in in real life um like how to know what's really happening by francis mckee uh was also one of our uh, earlier uh, books uh, that uh actually uh, ran out quite fast and we just uh, reprinted it. And um, it's, um, it's, it's interesting like how we do, like I was also listening, we were listening to the previous presentation. We also have this, this thing where we try to sell uh, as cheaply as possible uh, in the Arab world and, uh, and outside. So in every, in every city, we kind of gauge what is the, what could be the, the kind of affordable lowest price that we can place things at, uh, accord, like as far as we uh, know, and uh, and the returns from the sales go into uh, into the production of next books. So it's a nonprofit uh, project. We were a only able uh, to to finance uh, production of a next book uh, after the after our fourth book almost. Uh, only after the fourth book were we able to have. Um, to collect uh, money to make to print the fifth book, and um, yeah, this is um, this is now we have I think around uh, eight or nine of these small books, eight, eight, <clears throat> uh, and uh, it's a continuing project. We still uh, continue in that uh, in that series. However, we have opened up uh, our practice uh, also, as you mentioned, to the to the curatorial in a broader sense. So we also imagine. Uh, this this book series uh, uh, as a curatorial intervention in the landscape of of publishing uh, uh, in also uh, kind of artistic practices that deal with um, with publishing. Uh, but uh, we also uh, thought that to expand this project, uh, we expanded it to the to the exhibition format as a as a publishing platform, or as a vehicle uh, to enable research. So uh, in our experience doing this project hands-on uh, from one book to the other, you kind of become more and more uh, curious about uh, the publishing landscape uh, which you are situated in and also the histories of, of, uh, of independent publishing. Uh, and uh, these are not uh, uh, always like very um, uh, documented histories. There's a lot of ephemeral uh, production that you you hear about uh, from someone mentioning a, a book or a or a small publishing house. We are not um, uh, we are not um, registered as a publishing house. We are more like an artistic project, and um, and yeah. So we start getting uh, more and more curious about the context that we are in, and uh, this opens up uh, research interests, and they are. Uh, research threads that need a lot of um, digging and 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 some things uh, appear by just you know by coincidence you come across something or you find uh, an article in some uh, old publication that references uh, 
a certain movement that was active, for example, in Egypt from the 80s to the 90s, there was something called the Master Movement, which we did not know about. We only came across uh, really tangentially uh, about uh, a, uh, a turn in publishing on the 80s and 90s in Egypt, where uh, at a time when there was like very uh, um, a domineering state uh, publishing, where like only the state published, and then uh, you had these groups of writers all over Egypt who started uh, found certain loopholes in the in the law that allowed for non non periodical publishing, and which they started doing using very cheap uh, materials, uh, very cheap publishing techniques that were used for flyers or, you know, very low quality uh, um, commercial kind of production and that they started doing a lot of literary and artistic uh, literature. But all to say that we, uh, the exhibition uh, format gave us the opportunity to expand uh, our research into alternative publishing practices in the region, but also in the region that is like the Arab speaking region, but to also find resonances uh, internationally. So we kind of uh, identify, uh, come across projects that are really resonate with a certain project in our country, in, our, in this region, or that there's kind of synergies. <clears throat> so this led to uh, Kaifata organizing three exhibitions on the histories of or on independent publishing practices and publishing as artistic practice. Uh, the first was in Beirut. Uh, it was titled How to Reappear Through the Quivering Leaves of Independent Publishing. And we had um, uh, 1,000 square meters, uh, the area of the space, to show, you know, projects that involve books. So the size of, you know, the whatever size of the book publication, how big it can be, could not necessarily fill or create some sort of a of a of a display um, that is that is uh, that is experiential as well, you know, in an exhibition space. So we were interested in projects that could, uh, first of all, in the histories and what the projects and practices are doing, but also on how. Uh, some projects could also think of the format of the presentation in the exhibition and also how we can also help the publishers to present their work within the exhibition. So, for instance, this is the work of Bernard Cella, who is an artist from Austria. Uh, he, presented, <clears throat> he presented several works, but the major work was this, uh, which is basically an installation of books that we have launched an open call to collect um, <clears throat> books without ISBN numbers. Um, yeah, we can also type a bit about this. Yeah, uh, so uh, Bernard Cella had this uh, this project called No ISBN, uh, which uh, I think it was uh, already 10 years ago uh, that he did the first uh, edition of it in uh, PS1 uh, mm -hmm. New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was an open call. He was posting posters everywhere, uh, asking people to donate, to, to send him books uh, that have no ISBN. Uh, he was interested in seeing what kind of publications uh, uh, choose to go without an ISBN. Is this kind of, uh, what kind of uh, books exist in that space that is not necessarily uh, a space, uh, it's kind of like a little bit hidden. Uh, because of the fact that it has uh, no ISBN, they're not searchable in the way that, or accessible in the way, the ways that are allowed by having an ISBN. So he was interested uh, to explore this uh, this space, and he was uh, overwhelmed by the by the amount of books that uh, that arrived to him. And uh, based on on this collection, he started uh, researching, making different kinds of uh, of presentations, uh, research into the kinds of books, and and he comes up with exhibition like how do you present them also in an exhibition, uh, and we thought it's uh, it's a it's a very interesting project, and it would be uh, nice to redo that project uh, within the context of the Beirut show. So, uh, so uh, Bernard, we, together with Bernard, we did a, a new open call 
uh, in Arabic for uh, for books from the region. We also got a lot of uh, submissions, uh, which he um, then presented. You see this uh, this blue uh, uh, structure, structure <laughs> in which he organized. Then, like, how do you think about these these publications? He organized. He has this color coding. Uh, system of uh, of organizing books and see um, to to kind of uh, as a way of organizing that is not the usual um but also um uh, we were interested in the book that he made which was uh, a book that many of us uh, have come across before the no isbn book and we thought it would be also valuable to translate it into arabic uh, so we co-published arabic uh, edition uh, together with uh, with Bernard Cella Salon for Kunstbuch and uh, in that edition were included a, a new section uh, about uh, the Arabic publications that uh, came as a response to this new open call and this uh, and this was um, maybe the beginning of our interest in having like a new series of a new line of publishing that focused on publishing itself so in addition to the pocket size small books that we showed in the beginning, now we start to publish books uh, in different formats uh, that to focus on uh, publishing as a practice, as an artistic practice, as a, yeah, as a just a kind of uh, different kind of interventions from the margin of mainstream. And uh, what you see on the screen now is uh, another book in that line, which is called How to Maneuver, Shapeshifting Text and Other Publishing Tactics. And this book was born out of the, uh, the three chapter exhibitions that we that started. One, the first one was in Beirut, the second one was in Abu Dhabi, and the third one was in Amman, Jordan. Uh, and uh, this book, it includes... Um, submissions from the, uh, the we have worked with a, a wide range of artists uh, writers uh, translators uh, publishers distributors uh, different kinds of uh, participants in the in the publishing kind of landscape and they were uh, had a presence in the different chapters of this exhibition and we commissioned uh, some some of the participants whether they are artists or writers or uh, in the in these exhibitions to take part in this book, um, and um, so the, these were commissioned essays, uh, and there are also some uh, visual um, interventions, and uh, yeah, it just uh, like you have uh, you have received that uh, recreo some copies that would be like maybe the first. Uh, uh, appearance of this book uh, outside of uh, of Abu Dhabi where it was launched. Right. So yeah, this is uh, um, uh, our first uh, edited book uh, in this uh, in this new series that focuses on publishing practices, and we are continuing um, in this line um, uh, with different kinds of projects that we are working on now. Uh, and it's a way it's, it enables us to to further our research and also to sometimes you come you come across in this research which is kind of uh, accidental sometimes uh, you come across things as you go and you don't want to forget them and then you kind of it, it offers us it gives us this the opportunity to further our research into some of the findings that we come across uh, in our research whether for the small publications or the exhibitions or now for this line. Uh, maybe just also to mention that we used the exhibition opportunity to commission also, besides these books that we are printing and commissioning the text or soliciting published texts or translating it, them, we also commissioned uh, works uh, that respond or document or assist in the work of, uh, or in this research on histories of, um, of independent publishing. So there was like this project by Hala Dizri, who is a publisher and an academic from Beirut <clears throat> that uh, basically researches uh, printing, publishing, um, book selling, and all sorts of uh, histories related to this within the Levant, which is basically the um, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and Palestine 
from year zero until the mid 60s. And basically they produce it in this collapsible uh, format, which she can take into the class and on a paper that could also be written on and kind of wiped out if needed. And it does not tear. So basically this becomes like a tool that assists her in her own academic work, but also an exhibitable piece that could also intrigues others to contribute to this timeline and, and, and share information as they have them. Um, another uh, project was this uh, um, um, project by Rafat Majdoub called uh, Street School, uh, which is basically um, a proposal or a, um, a collaborative work that he has like uh, put together with knowledge curated from the street. And uh, basically, <clears throat> it offers a space within the exhibition space that could be used as a learning site or as a sharing site or as a publishing site. And it changes from one uh, exhibition to another. I apologize, my voice is not working well today. Yeah. Um, and uh, he, so uh, Rafat, we invited Rafat to the three, some, some artists we invited uh, to the three chapters of this exhibition because their projects were really um, uh, opening up in their research and it, it kind of profited from having uh, a second and third kind of iteration and expansion. So as Ala was saying, uh, in the street school uh, project, he would always um, uh, mine this kind of street knowledge, uh, sensibilities, like uh, kind of um, streetwise ways of... of uh, economizing, like how do you use the material that is around you and the knowledge uh, that is uh, around you also in your neighborhood and how do you, uh, how, how, how can you make use of these knowledges that often are not uh, respected or not given uh, a space to really uh, um, exist and, and, and enter into a dialogue with kind of more settled uh, uh, forms of knowledge and he was also he also has an uh, uh, a background in architecture and in architecture he was also interested in another format of publishing or uh, of propositions so the the proposal for him uh, he was exploring the idea of a proposal as a publishing format uh, meaning uh, our public spaces are often uh, shaped through proposals that are sent by uh, city planners to government uh, municipalities and then uh, they're discussed in closed meeting rooms and then uh, we as the public are faced, uh, are not part of that discussion often and are faced with the final result. So he was interested in how can the proposal become part of a discussion from before its uh, ratification in these kinds of uh, circles. So to consider the proposal as a as a pub, as a publishable uh, format uh, and who can take part of in it and how can it uh, shape uh, policy uh, and shape kind of decisions uh, that uh, before you know that in a way that is more uh, um, communal right before it, uh, before it becomes like uh, ratified so taking that format outside of the kind of professional uh secretive somehow channels uh, bringing it out to the open from way uh, from early on and uh, yeah like you see also different like these letter boxes were also had different kinds of um propositions that were sent to different kind of actors in in the city of beirut and um yeah it's a it's a kind of a um was a very interesting project uh, it was all built from scrap material that was gathered uh, in Beirut and was also um, con designed and constructed collaboratively with uh, constructors uh, that Rafat knew from uh, the neighborhood, uh, but also the kind of production costs so that he got as an artist uh, was shared, uh, like the whole like budget he got was shared with this group and together they decided how they want to how they want to divide this money and how they want to how much they want to spend on actualizing the thing and how much they want to take as fees and like this whole so it's all about opening up the conversation of uh, of production
And uh, the smaller picture is like what he did in Amen, which was uh, something different, but maybe it's better to also talk about other projects that we had. Um, maybe you speak about the symposium and the meeting you yeah. organized with uh, other publishers. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, moving the... So in, in the second chapter of uh, how uh, of this exhibition series, uh, this chapter was the chapter called How to Maneuver Shape-Shifting Texts and Other Publishing Tactics. Um, from our experience in the first exhibition, uh, we, um, we kind of, uh, you know, we talk, we, we have sh conversations, of course, with the artists uh, who were invited, with other artists who come to the space, with publishers we uh, had connections with, but with others also. And then you start kind of having this over overview or, or more intimate, maybe, uh, understanding of the problems. Many of them are shared amongst us all. And uh, but also of different uh, solutions that people found in different contexts. So we thought we should really um, try to, to further that discussion. And maybe we need to create a, a setup whereby we can, again, bring together these different um, artists, publishers, etc., uh, in, a, in a more focused way uh, so that we can have more time together to uh, discuss. But also we can take the opportunity of this kind of concentrated moment, but also the funding that was provided by the host institution uh, to invite people whom we think may have answers that are useful to us. Uh, so we had, we created this symposium that was uh, a two day symposium, a three day symposium. It was a two day, first day was closed meetings, as you can see here with people from different uh, levels of, uh, of like involvement with publishing projects or sizes of their institutions, whether on national, personal, or regional levels. Um, and there were also these open, uh, there was like a full day, open day. Both days were full days anyways. And where, yeah, we started presenting in different constellations, you know, like from publishing to for the nation, um, down to like you know um people who publish their like for only for their like very intimate networks um and it was interesting because it's just uh um exchange there was a lot of exchange about on um the problems that we face obstacles of moving uh, projects books um they each spoke about the places they came from, where they worked, how they moved across um, their, like the geographies or the ge regional area, like markets they could serve. And uh, friendships were also born from this uh, meeting where other collaborations emerged later, separately from the networks of what, of, or what uh, Kaifata is doing. But among the things that were born as well, I mean, from all these uh, events, was also a network, a publishing network that we're trying to you know, to build through the circulation of a newsletter that we have already just issued one issue of it um, in collaboration with Barakunan, who is also like um, uh, uh, an independent uh, collective uh, publisher uh, <clears throat> who have been uh, who has uh, taken part in the three exhibitions. So she the photo is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, because we had uh, uh, in the context of these exhibitions got to uh, know more and more uh, Barakunan, and we have a lot of uh, shared interests. And uh, like Ella said, they are a collective of artists, uh, writers, editors, and they publish, uh, they self-publish uh, their work. And uh, we we together we also had the, the a shared interest in. Uh, distribution and also of having kind of more um, how do we uh, get more in, in conversation with kind of wider networks that we are not uh, in just uh, enclosed in our cities. Uh, we know that our publications have uh, resonate uh, to also readers uh, that are 
from different regions, but however, we are maybe not reaching uh, those, those, uh, this readership. And uh, yeah, so we were, have an interest in also like, how do we, do we think differently about the structural issues of our practices? uh distribution visibility uh moving things around but also moving our like in terms of like the kind of structural issues but also our personal projects so we started this ongoing conversation and together we thought we would make uh, a newsletter uh that would uh, that is open for anyone to send uh, contributions, but it started from the networks that evolved in this symposium on this series of exhibitions. So the publishers that we met and the artists uh, that we met, and we asked them for contributions. We made uh, the first uh, issue of this uh, newsletter, and the name, um, the name Sheleputo means the female tortoise. <laughs> comes from uh, uh, Akkadian, uh, like a, a very old uh, language. And uh, yeah, it's basically this kind of slow but uh, persevering uh, effort to, uh, to reach somewhere. <laughs> Maybe we are running out of time. I don't know how we're doing with time. Yeah, I think we're, we already spoke for around 40 minutes. Okay, let's see if there's a... Um, where's the other window? Okay. Hello. So let yes. us let us. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe uh, we are over thirty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have more things uh, you want to talk about, or we can go to into questions, or we can go into questions. So we. Uh, yeah, if anybody wants to ask anything, uh, tell us before because we need to check the mic. No, nothing? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's give it an applause for Kefa Daya. <laughs> Thanks so much. It's really interesting. And uh, all the books will be available in the collective table. So, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye.